Live from Mountain View, California, it's theCUBE. Covering DevNet Create 2019. Brought to you by Cisco. Hi, Lisa Martin for theCUBE, live at Cisco DevNet Create 2019. This is day two of our coverage here. We're excited to welcome Taylor Barnett, a speaker, tech talk speaker for this event, lead community engineer at Stoplight. Taylor, it's great to have you on theCUBE. I'm glad to be here. So first and foremost, before we talk about your tech talk that you gave yeah. yesterday here at DevNet Create, tell us a little bit about Stoplight. Yeah, so Stoplight is a platform to uh, build, test, and design web APIs. Um, specifically, we focus right now on REST APIs, but we're really uh, encouraging design first principles when people are building out their APIs. We're very much pre-production, um, and what we have found was so many APIs out there are not documented, they're not tested, they're not designed well, and so we wanted to build tooling to help users be able to do that. So that documentation we've heard yeah. yesterday and today yeah. is absolutely yeah. essential. Yeah, and so a lot of what we're doing is we're actually using the open API specification, which uh, a lot of teams at Cisco are now using, and um, so we can auto-generate documentation from that, but also we can auto-generate instant mock servers, um, do different types of testing, all from that, because it's both human and machine readable, so we're taking advantage of that. So you gave a tech talk yesterday, yeah. Go, I like the title, going to infinity mm -hmm. and beyond yeah. documentation with open API. Tell us, our audience, like, yeah. Basically, kind of an overview of what you presented and yeah. the three takeaways that your audience left with. Yeah. So historically, open API specification has been known to be an auto-generating reference documentation. So a lot of people are like, yeah, I know it for documentation, but they don't know it for all the other things. So the things that help them do design first principles, the things that help them mock and uh, get feedback about their APIs, and also how to test. And so I'd say the three takeaways, that's what I focus on, was how does this design first really benefit us? And why is it worth spending that time? Because to a lot of engineers, it kind of feels like a friction point, like you're making me do something else before I can start coding. Um, and so helping them see those benefits. And then also being able to, to use the feedback through they get through mock APIs so that they don't have to code all the API and then get the feedback, they can do it before that process. So much and faster. Yeah, totally. And just better testing to actually make sure that we, once we design the API, that we're actually implementing it to what the design says. Um, so on the design front, you mentioned design first, and I was yeah. telling you before we went live that we've heard that a yeah. lot throughout Jen and I have yesterday and today, this is design first approach. And it sounds like from what you're saying for developers, yeah. it's not necessarily the first thing they want to do, they want to get their hands on yeah. and start coding. So yeah. tell me, tell us what design first means and actually how it can really make the developer's job better. Yeah. Yeah, so design first is really just being able to take a step back before that code and like describe what the API is on a lower like endpoint level. Um, for us, that's doing it in a visual editor at Stoplight. We actually have a visual editor to help people do that so that it's not like writing things from scratch. So even then, that makes it faster than having to write on a blank document that nobody wants to like write in. Um, and it might be a mess and decisions are hard to make around that document because it's a mess and all this stuff. And then being able to take that and then start doing the mocking and all the other things. So for developers, it's a lot about getting to see what those other benefits are to convince them that it's worth it and it's going to save them time overall versus like having to wait. One great example of that is actually with uh, being able to mock APIs. Front end engineers could go ahead and start implementing the API before the development process of actually implementing it is even done. So that traditional like waterfall development process, you just cut that out because they can start doing it in parallel. Um, and so it can really make teams a lot more efficient. Did you, were you happy with the reaction yesterday? Because this is a, an yeah. event, uh, this, the DevNet community has got yeah. 585,000 plus people. There's been about 400 here in person. Yeah. What was the reaction, especially from developers who may have been around a while and are very used to that yeah. waterfall approach? Yeah. Were they like, Taylor, this is amazing, or girl, this is yeah. like a whole <laughs> cultural change. Yeah, you know, I mean, we, we work with actually a lot of enterprise companies at Stoplight, and it is, it is a little bit of a cultural change. You talk, there's this whole bigger idea of like API transformation, even just moving to having APIs first is a bigger change. And then, you know, then the design part, but I have found that once, if you're introducing somebody to APIs first, it's easy to sneak in design. 
Oh, is it really? Um, and so then you don't have to then teach, oh, let's design the API first and do design. It's all part of the same package. Um, so a lot of enterprises with their like transformations to moving to like an very API focused infrastructures, um, they, they then are just more receptible to the design first. That's good, especially yeah. if, if you're able to show them the, the obvious benefits yeah. to their getting things done faster. Yeah. Like this is actually taking this new approach is actually going to be better for you. And do you find that, that developers are a, adjusting quickly to this new principle? Yeah, no, I mean there's definitely pain points. The tooling is still catching up. Uh, so, uh, the, the industry has, for REST APIs has kind of centered around open API specification, but there were others before that, RAML for, uh, specifically, and it used to, for anybody also, open API used to be called Swagger specification. Um, some people might know it by that. But a lot of it is like, yeah, the, the tooling is still maturing, but it's in a lot better place than it used to be. So when I was a back-end API engineer about four or five years ago, I was introduced through API Blueprint, which is another specification, and it was very painful to have to document an API with it, and now it's just gotten so much better with, with the tooling maturing. So you can see massive differences alone just in oh the yeah, last few years. Totally, yeah, just like last four years, yeah, totally. So this is your first DevNet Create, and yeah. you're a speaker at your very first one. That's pretty cool, Taylor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How long have you been involved in the DevNet community, and how has it impacted what you do for Stoplight? Yeah, so I was kind of introduced through it. I knew people that worked on DevNet, and like Mandy, and, and so then I kind of got introduced to that. Um, and no, it's been really interesting to see how they've built up this community of people sharing code and things, and it's different than like a GitHub type community, and so it's kind of interesting. So? It was just like, it's a, you know, you don't see a lot of uh, communities that are run by companies that necessarily they're 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 not in the code repository business, but they see the value in people sharing things and collaborating and stuff like that. And so it's kind of a little different of a community, but also very interesting to have watched it grow. Yeah, the sharing and the collaboration. You yeah. walk in yesterday, and people are eager to do that. Yeah. And in other types of conferences that we cover at the Cube, especially if there's co-opetition partners there, it's a different vibe. This yeah. has been very very much one that's been refreshing. Yeah. Um, and to your point, the difference between what Cisco's built here in the last, very organically by yeah. the way, in the last five years, what Susie and Mandy have done, um, that openness and that excitability to share things and to learn from each yeah. other, even though there's got to be developers here from competing companies, yeah. that's a very cool spirit. Yeah. And something that I think they've done a very good job fostering that. They've yeah. also, I kind of wonder if it's chicken and egg, how much has DevNet and this you know, over half a million strong community been sort of a forcing function yeah. or an accelerator of Cisco's evolution. Because if you look at Cisco's been around for such a long yeah. time, not an API first company, yeah. big enterprise. This is a big, all of their products now have APIs. Yeah. This is a big it's, change for it's them. It's been really awesome to see all the talks that are focused on Cisco's APIs being designed first. Like, I don't see a lot of enterprises that feel like they've really taken it to heart as much. And I've talked to some people and they say, yeah, I mean, you know, there's been some pain points, but I'm like, yeah, but there's companies that are envious of the, that y'all have done this. Yes. Um, and they've really like probably improved the developer experience of their API so much because of having that design first approach. So one other thing that I think is very cool about DevNet and Create is that yesterday morning it was kicked off by two really strong female yeah. technologists. You both mentioned, we had Mandy Wheelie on yesterday, who's the Senior Director of Developer Experience. Um, right after you, I've got Susie Wee on, the yeah. SVP and CTO. And I go to a lot of events. The Cube covers a, a lot of events every year, and it's very important to us to be able to highlight women in technology because it's still an unresolved, you know, gap there. But it's also really unusual to see an event kicked off both days yeah. by females. You've been a STEM since you were a kid. How does that impact you? Do you see that as inspiring? Do you see that yeah. as I wish it wasn't an issue. Yeah, no, yeah, I wish it wasn't an issue, but no, but it's really awesome. So like when I was trying to decide if I accept my, when they asked me to come speak, I totally looked at that. That was something when I saw their faces on the home, that they were going to be keynotes and stuff, you know, it gave me already like a whole different feeling of how the conference was going to be. So it was really uh, exciting to see that, yeah. That's good, and when I first got into tech a long time ago, I was just not aware. I'm not, yeah. was not, I'm not a, in a technical role, but, I yeah. didn't notice. I mean, I noticed the difference, yeah. 
and and the disparity, but I it, I didn't feel it. Yeah. And so it wasn't until I started going to more and more events where I saw, wow, yeah. there's some. Yeah. Sometimes you're at events where it's just a sea of people that don't look like you, and it's a lot different here. Yeah. Yeah. And so I imagine I appreciated it this morning. I'm sure yeah. you did as well when Susie called onto stage the young girls from Verizon yeah. and those from Presidio that are. Cisco's clearly making a concerted effort to recognize yeah. and help this diversity in, yeah. in thought. I mean, imagine designing APIs with the, you know, many different perspectives and yeah. how much better products and services and companies yeah. will be if we just have more thought diversity yeah. in and of itself. A lot, yeah, I think about it a lot with developer experience. So one of the things is there's this idea of beginner's mind failure that sometimes if if you think your API is like great, but you don't approach it with a beginner's mind, you might actually be failing a lot of your users. So you know you're a you're a veteran developer, you're you're super skilled and you you don't fail in the similar areas that someone who's newer to development might fail. And so then you just lost a bunch of your customers. And right up front, without even them getting deeper into the API. And, and so being able to have like more diverse perspectives around designing APIs can definitely help prevent that. That's a really important point, Taylor, that you make there because you just, it's like, it, this is really, everything that's designed these days, yeah. whatever it is, a, an iPad, but sticker, a, piece of clothing, yeah. it's all designed for a consumer yeah. to consume whatever the product or service is. And you know, in technology, so much conversation goes around delivering an outstanding customer experience. Yeah. And you're saying, you know, we have to think about that. Yeah. That's probably where design We're, thinking comes yeah. into play, right? About yeah. being designing with a sort of a diverse perspective approach yeah. that, hey, you're going to lose customers here yeah. if we're It actually not gets to the bottom line. Yeah, yeah exactly. Versus just being like a nice benefit kind exactly. of thing. Exactly. Yeah. Well Taylor, it's been so fun having you on theCUBE. Yeah. Thank you so much. I know you have the flight to catch back Thanks. to Austin, so thank you so much for no joining problem. me this afternoon. Yeah. And congrats on being a speaker at awesome. your first DevNet. We'll see you next Thanks year. Thanks for having me. Oh, Thanks. my pleasure. I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from Cisco DevNet Create 2019. Thanks for watching.